Welcome, everyone. I am here with Dan Willis, and this is the first episode of our sharing of our humble, humble knowledge with you guys and girls, the audience, about crystals, crystal technology. But let us start by the very beginnings. This is the first class on how to choose the right crystal. Dan Willis, I'm very delighted to do this, that with you. Uh, welcome. And um, you can share a little bit how you got into crystal work. Oh, it's such a pleasure to do this with you. Uh, how exciting <laughs> that we're bringing galactic knowledge of the use of crystals, you know, to the people of our planet. Um, I um, I got involved in this <laughs> an unusual experience back in 1977. Um, I had a kundalini opening and I had this being that uh, you later identified as an emethor, which is one of the Council of Five. And he projected in space a sphere. And as I observed, the was geometries within the sphere. And what he was doing was conveying the geometry of the matrix. And uh, this left a burning passion in me to try to understand more about what this was about. And so I uh, sought out in the early 1980s uh, Dr. Marcel Vogel who was IBM's head scientist, who set up a laboratory to research crystals. And um, what's what's fascinating is, you know, um, he had this vision, this dream that came to him when he started working with crystals, trying to make it more effective. Um, and he saw this dipyramidal form, like a tree of life. And... One end was like near a 52 degree angle, like the Great Pyramid, and the other end was like a 60 degree angle. And it just so ha happens that uh, this is the same geometries they use on the planet Era uh, by the Palladians. So, um, anyway, it's a long story. I, um, you know, traveled to the, drove to the mines in Arkansas and brought back a huge batch of crystals. And Marcel was like, cutting them in his garage, you know, for these two dozen medical doctors. And I helped procure some of the laboratory equipment and worked with what he, the techniques that he, he taught on how to uh, use healing on others and healing on self using the crystal with a particular technique. And uh, I had a lot of success with it, what he taught me. And, um, Decades go by, <laughs> and uh, you know, last year in the year 2022, um, I am so grateful for you to uh, connect with Thorhan's younger brother, Jen Handeredion, and um, you proposed to him that uh, you know, here there 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 are sciences thousands of years ahead of uh, what we have here on Earth, especially in the technology of crystals. And um, he started uh, answering these questions that we started relaying, you and I, back and forth in the question and answer session. We now have, uh, since April of last year, over 111 pages of question and answer, which I put up on marcelvogel.org. And uh, it was amazing that we discovered that uh, what Jen Han shared matched the laboratory research work with Dr. Marcel Vogel discovered. And, and we, in fact, we did that show, um, you know, uh, you know, changing the planetary timeline, making a positive uh, impact on that. And we had a great response. That was a, that was an incredible show that corroborated what Marcel discovered and what Jen Han uh, shared with us. And so, Taking the knowledge of what Dr. Marcel Vogel uh, developed, we are taking that and expanding it to even another level to share with the people of Earth. And I am you know, very, very honored that the Galactic Federation of Worlds has authorized the sharing of this information 
and that uh, it is my hope and desire that the people using crystal technology uh, will use it for the healing self and healing others and uh, and healing the planet, you know, to uh, when you understand that we are fractals of source and that we're creative and that the crystal is a tool that allows you to go in to the planetary matrix and instill a positive timeline with love. And that's what Marcel discovered was that with love and what jen Han said as well that it transcends and it's most powerful because it's 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 connected to source love and and the, the material of quartz he said it was the uh well i'll let you i'll let you share that uh what uh what jen Han said what what the material of quartz actually is, which it's interesting because you and I know throughout history, throughout the world, quartz has been used in sacred um, sacred means and different cultures, uh, but it hasn't had the scientific understanding until, uh, you know, currently. Yes, I believe we had this technology before we knew about how to use quartz to not only heal, but also produce energy, you know, and even act on modifying the, the matrix of reality, which we, um, we delve in, 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 deep, in depth <laughs> in a previous video you and I did with Marcel Vogel and Jen Hans um, corroborating knowledge. Um, crystal, yeah, crystals, I mean, quartz, especially. Jen Han told us that it, it is of the same frequency as love and as also light and as the creative um, frequency of source. So with crystals, we hold, uh, when you hold a crystal in your hand, you hold a tremendous power. It's like you are able to do anything you, ca you, you want if you know how to use it. So um, let's start by the size of a crystal. Mm. Um, oh, oh, before talking about the size, I think it's, it's maybe better to type, talk about the types, the types of crystals. What are the different types of crystals that are available um, to us? And what's the difference? Yes, um, there's many different types of crystals on our planet. Uh, quartz happens to be the most abundant of them. Um, different crystals have different elements in them, so they have different geometries, and therefore they each have a specific function. Diamonds, rubies, emeralds, uh, amethyst, all have their qualities to them. But the clear quartz is exceptional in that it's universal. It resonates with everything. Um, in fact, uh, Jen Han said that uh, it, uh, it, it resonates with source and that uh, it acts as an interdimensional bridge and that uh, water and love are all part of this uh, core fractal geometry that they all interact with. So water, quartz, and love are like they interface naturally with each other. And that's why um, that's why it's important to use love when you uh, work with a crystal. So quartz would so quartz and natural quartz or cut or raw, it's 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 one type. And what do we find else? Uh, our disposal. Well, um, crystals as they grow in nature, um, you know, like like this. What's what's curious is that um, the um, this one's not as heavy to hold. <laughs> uh, all these angles. What are they? Um, they're 50, around 52 degrees. Jen Han gives specifically 51.843 <laughs> to be exact. He's very exacting. 
Um, it's the same exact angle as the Great Pyramid, something you're very familiar with, <laughs> being an Egyptologist. Um, so there is a whole lot that goes into this geometry and how it interfaces with the matrix and the relationship of the golden mean ratio, which, which uh, resonates into infinity. Um, the, um, the, there's different types of crystals. Uh, there's also, you know, they, they grow crystals in laboratories You know, they start with a seed and they use a highly saturated solution. Um, uh, and they can, become very um very pure in the structure but they are missing an element of the, the crystals grow over millions of years and so they have this infusion of the matrix of the planetary matrix within the structure of the crystal so the natural crystal has that which a synthetic crystal doesn't but that doesn't mean that the synthetic crystals can't be uh useful as well um yes, yes i remember the, Johan um, saying this yes I remember. the um the crystals can be marcel found that uh like a he always used to say to me you know these sciences are akin to those that we know in normal physics and in normal physics, uh, the technology of a laser, which was actually developed from extraterrestrial technology, um, has like a ruby crystal in the middle with two mirrors and they photon excite it and the energy oscillates back and forth between these two mirrors. And one mirror completely reflects and the other one's 99%. And at 1% it is strong enough to cut through steel. This is the power of the lasing effect. Now, so Marcel started to cut the crystals as a, um, he started with a four-sided, I believe he was going with a four-sided uh, crystal because it's like, like the Great Pyramid has four sides on it. And then he uh, started uh, going to more sides, then he went to like a, a six-sided crystal and he he felt that the number of sides increased the spin and then he went to like a uh, here's an eight-sided crystal that was one of his favorites to use and kept on going up to more sides this is like a 16-sided but he he missed something in the progression of creating more sides on the crystal. And that is that um, he didn't respect the hexagonal lattice of the crystal. What you want to do is always work in alignment with nature. And the, the natural structure of, of a quartz crystal is always hexagonal. And so Jenhan made it clear that um, if you cut the crystal with the 52 degree angle on one end and the 60 degree angle on the other end, um, something that Marcel didn't know about that uh, he would have been very excited to learn, and that is that each uh, pyramidal termination created a space spinning vortex and they were they're going in opposite directions and they come together into a phase conjunction node that these two vortices that when you stimulate the piezoelectric lattice structure by either physical pressure or electronic pulses um in other words you know you can physically squeeze the crystal what happens is that it opens up this vortex eye of the crystal which opens into the singularity and jenhan said that it it connects into the into the void which is in other words you can connect to 
any place in time and space, any dimension, any anything, it uh, it's like a um, this this gateway that is opened within the crystal. That the six sided crystal has this uh, this capability that uh, Jen Han has shared. Yes, and um, Jen Han. Uh, so I'm going to read. Uh, be his voice for uh, how he explains how a quartz crystal is in in interface with with everything. So mm -hmm. I am going to read his words uh, now. Jenhan said, "The core holographic structure of quartz, the purest material in the universe." is based on the same core fractal formula than water and both are interdimensional bridges. Crystals can store data just as water does because constructed on the same fractal core formula. But crystals have way more capacities. Of course, they are the most elaborate state of matter. So elaborate that it naturally embeds consciousness. A crystal is a bridge because it exists in all dimensions at a time. Natural and cut crystals work when they are not altered. What I mean is no breaks and cracks in the angles. It must be complete. We visited an Altian craft recently. That is why I am visiting this star system to learn more about their terraforming science and the way they use crystals in their ships. Notably, the walls in the commons, our areas, are made with natural crystals, but they are impeccable with unaltered angles. Otherwise, they wouldn't bridge the densities. Now, you had a personal experience, didn't you? Yes, I went a few times on board an Altian ship. And the first time I was shocked. You know, when you um, connect with um, a higher, you know, higher intelligence civilization, you think you are going to see some, some architecture even more futuristic and pure lines. And there were the walls were made with. Um, Clusters of crystals. It wasn't cut out in crystal. No, it was crystal points that were sticking out of the walls, but and that was the walls. Organic and, looking. Uh, organic looking. That was in extraordinary. Even entering into the ship, it was I ca I cannot get away from this idea that it was entering in the canal of a womb. I had this, this this thought because the ship was alive and it, it, it was crystals everywhere inside. And when I couldn't understand why it was so organic looking. And I was explained later, as Jen Han uh, told us also, that um, in these ships, there are people from different densities living at the same time in the same commons. So in order for them to live in the same physicality, instead of in the Galactic Federation of Worlds uh, wearing density belts or environmental suits, uh, no, what they do, it's that it's the architecture, it's the, the, the ship that does that. It bridges all densities and dimensions together by the crystals. Crystals are able to do that. So if you have a being of sixth density, he can walk physically in that ship beside a being of a fifth density. And they both are physical. They, they can shake hands and whatever. So yes, I had this personal experience and it was a revelation to me. A revelation that, well, I need to go back in thinking a bit more about crystals. So here we are. <laughs> the, the whole idea of crystals Bridging multiple densities, we are aware that reality is made up of multiple densities. And this is the 
the key factor that uh, I believe was used when uh, Marcel was working with these doctors with these healing procedures. And, you know, the first time I met with him, <laughs> I was sitting on a couch with a doctor and he de dematerialized this, this tumor on this girl's ankle. I mean, it went out of 3D, you know, I pulled the rug out from under it, which shows that the higher density creates the lower densities. The lower does not create the higher. And so when you're able to bridge the densities and you, with your consciousness, you know, we'll get into that in a future class with, you know, healing. And in fact, we're going to expand upon the known effective healing methodologies that uh, Marcel was able to use with the knowledge of Genhan, who, you know, there are thousands of years <laughs> in ahead of our technological understanding. But this whole idea of bridging bridging densities with the crystal is is a key uh, in understanding how how you can experience these rapid transformations in the three D world uh, through interfacing your consciousness and now consciousness as we and Marcel and Jen Han both confirm this that. Uh, said that uh, tetrahedral fractal geometry is the secret of the universe and that when we think thoughts they're each a complex geometric pattern that's being projected and going into this matrix and so uh, when you're able to bridge the densities and interface your consciousness with it it has a very profound effect yes Dan and imagine this a source which is the highest density in all universes um, in our universe, in our dimension, it's the 13th level of density of matter. That's what creates all the sub-densities uh, be beneath it. And <clears throat> our consciousness is a fractal source consciousness. So when we connect with who we truly are, when we connect with, when we become our consciousness and we vibrate in the frequency of our consciousness, the body doesn't exist, whatever. Well, we, we, we have this power. And when we use a quartz, it totally bridges it. And it helps bridging the, the, the frequency level of source through our consciousness in, in, in 3D matter. And that's why crystals are absolutely uh, crucial tools. Uh, we, we need to uh, know more about them. And uh, where can we find them on on Earth? You, the main, <laughs> the main um, places where we. Well, um, you know, people can. <laughs> you can you can go online, and you know, you can get a, you know, just a, uh, you know, a simple crystal point. You you, you can spend you know five dollars or, or you know fifteen dollars or whatever you know for just a, a single crystal point um but um Regions, and, yeah, and it's cool it's quartz you know so it 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 does work but uh jen had said something uh very very specific about uh the difference between a natural crystal point and a Vogel cut crystal is what they call it. And uh, I'll let you read that one. <laughs> yes, yes, I actually have it here. Um, you were asking uh, Jen Han, are the Vogel cut crystals significantly more powerful than a natural single quartz uh, crystal points uh, for doing this? Han said, oh yes, they are if it is cut rightly, in perfect alignment with the grid of the lattice. Natural raw quartz are, of course, effective, but the vogel cut, as you name them, are a more surgical tool to operate into the fabric of space-time and universal consciousness. 
if only they um, only cost it five dollars. <laughs> but, right. but to to cut a crystal um, so that it is cut along, there are several requirements that have to be met by the uh, lapidaris that cuts the crystal and and a and consciousness that's behind the intention of the one that's cutting the crystal uh, you want to cut it according to the growth axis they call it the c axis it's so that you're in the, so that the the tips on both ends are perfectly aligned with the growth axis where the energy spirals down and also you want to um had an alignment with the hexagonal core of the crystal so that the six sides are aligned with the lattice structure of the crystal um you know especially on the on the six sided type crystal um and so it takes a lot of skill and not all the materials are perfectly um you know clear you know it becomes quite expensive so um I've uh, been working with, uh, you know, you and I, I just want to make it clear, we have absolutely no financial interest. We're not crystal sellers or anything like that. We're strictly wanting to teach the people how to utilize these technologies, you know, for for the for benevolent purposes. Um, but there's a, a couple that has a business called Crystal Light and Sound, and they have... Um, instructed their cutters to cut the crystals for the six-sided in the specification that Jen Han, they, they, they love the information we've been getting. And so um, their, their crystals on the six-sided, they, uh, they range, you know, from small, medium to large. Uh, the smaller one is actually quite, quite nice. Um, it's under $150, which is when you consider Vogel cut crystals can go into several hundreds and even thousands of dollars. Um, and it has the specific uh, requirements that are required to, um, you know, make it effective. Um, and on MarcelVogel.org, I have a link there if somebody wants to acquire a crystal that's that's a, a recommendation uh but you can find uh you know you can find crystals all across the internet you know vogel crystal is amazing it's like what marcel started you'll find vogel crystals everywhere across the planet but you want to make sure that uh they're cutting it according to the correct specification and that they're cutting it in the c-axis they're cutting it in alignment they're at the 52 degree angle is correct and the 60 degree angle is correct and so you know it's a little bit of a gamble you know but uh there's a difference between a a vogel cut crystal quote unquote and a vogel inspired crystal a vogel cut crystal is one that's uh, the lapidaris has been trained in specifically cutting Vogel cut crystals to the specification. So if you're getting a Vogel cut crystal, you can rest assured that you're getting the correct specifications of the crystal, but <laughs> you'll be paying for it. It's quite a bit of money to get that. So you have uh, an option. You have a Vogel inspired crystal, which is cut by... Uh, you know, talented lapidaris that are have been given the instructions on the correct ways of doing it. And so it's considerably less money, uh, which makes it affordable, you know, for some people. So, you know, as you go up in size, you know, you can go from, you know, a, a small crystal, which is kind of nice. It's a, it, it'll do the job. Uh, it, it fits ergonomically in your hand. Um, you want to get a crystal that uh, is comfortable, uh, not only resonates with you, but is ergonomically comfortable in your hand. Like this is like a, a medium size. And then you have, uh, you know, monster size 
<laughs> crystals. <laughs> yeah, you this want to be able be... to manipulate it and, and turn it like easily, you know, without being stressed of dropping it. So I think that you can that well. The um, large so... crystal, by the way, we're working with two I'm working with two teams of scientists from the information Jen Han has given, and we're constructing a, a frill generator. Frill is like the life force of the universe. They use it on the planet Era. Um, Jen Han's sister actually works at one of the stations that has a has a pyramid, and the crystal is there with the special pulsating energy that generates the frill, and then it's sent wirelessly across the planet, and they power everything with this. And they even use this technology to power their starships. These with the torsion fields. So. Um, I mean, it, it's it's quite an honor to be able to bring this technology, you know, to our planet that uh, could be used for uh, very benevolent purposes. Absolutely. And so, when you choose a crystal um, for doing this, this this work, we really recommend its quartz. There are all, all of the colors of crystals and, and structures like amethyst, citrine rose quartz and all the rest are all good for different specific works. But if you want to work with the lattice of the universe, manifest your reality, bridge densities, uh, do all these things, it's quartz for its frequency. And uh, when, when choosing quartz, then, you know, um, people can get confused. Do I, will I pick a quartz that comes from Arkansas, Himalaya, Brazil, uh, do you know the difference between the quality of the quartz from these provenance? Some people have preferences on regions, you know, Himalayan quartz versus uh, Madagascar. Uh, during World War II, uh, the Brazilian quartz was, was sought after because uh, during the war, <laughs> it was actually instrumental in uh, winning the war with the Nazis, or so we thought anyway. Um <laughs> that uh, it allowed an exact frequency oscillation for the uh, radio transmitters and so forth. So because it had a high high quality of piezoelectric uh, ability, the piezoelectric uh, is basically, you have like a, a six-pointed star with charge centers in the middle. One triangle is positive, one's negative. And so what happens when electrical pulse or physical pressure happens it offsets these charge centers just a little bit causes thousands of volts to be generated um, because you have trillions of these that are being offset and so that's the piezoelectric effect where uh, either physical pressure or electronic pulse will um, oscillate the lattice and and, and generate a uh, electrical charge on the outside of the crystal and you can you can actually uh marcel used to do uh something where you take your finger and you run it across it when you charge the crystal you could feel like it it sticks a little bit because there's this uh there's this charge on the surface of the crystal yeah a little bit like is it is it a little bit like statics or something like this it's, yeah something like that uh-huh um, and um, what I want to say, yes, when choosing a crystal as well, uh, well, ready. thank you for these precisions. I think it's very, very helpful. When choosing a crystal, um, I think also beside all the, the technical um, knowledge that you need to have about what you just explained, uh, Dan, there's also the intuition that works. No. When I choose a crystal, I always say, and many people say, oh, it's the crystal who chose me. And that, because of the frequency, your frequency is going to interface with the frequency of a crystal in a shop or even online. You know, you, you browse and why this one is not the most beautiful, it's not the cheapest, it's not, but it's the one, you know, that's so that I always let my intuition guide me. The first I saw, usually, 
uh, is the one that is going to come home with me. Um, how does it work with you, Dan, the, the intuition? <laughs> oh, yeah, intuition. <laughs> it's a good thing to pay attention to. You know, yeah. it's it, it's always talking to you. Um, and, you know, regarding the, regarding the size, remember the lattice structure <laughs> of, the, of the quartz, you know, even with a small crystal uh, is is massive <laughs> within so um the difference is that uh, a larger crystal has has a more capacity um to to do a little bit more like that but uh don't underestimate a smaller crystal to be able to uh to have a powerful effect does it need to be clear 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 or it can have some clouds and stuff in it as as we learned from Janhan, um that where the um uh, and, and he showed showed you in a diagram where the angles of the two terminations they they come out like this and like this and where they meet in the center is the eye of the crystal and he said it was and you can have inclusions in the other areas of the crystal but you want to keep this region where the uh, two vortices come together, you want to have that fairly clear. Yes, and um, I'm going to read quickly uh, what Jen Han uh, said, because we have, I think, a year of conversations with, with him. And uh, there's a lot of... <laughs> so this is a little excerpt of a question he answered about... A question you ask about the, the clarity of the quartz. And this is what he said. So Jen Han said in response uh, regarding a question about inclusion, is this a quartz inclusion? Mm. So it has the same frequency as the host crystal and it doesn't disturb the flux. If it was a different material, it would be annoying, but it doesn't seem mm. it is. Also, it is not anywhere near the vortex zone. So I think your crystal is good done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had an inclusion in the uh in the crystal and it uh it was uh, actually actually this one. It has a little little inclusion on the on the tip, but it doesn't affect the vortex because the vortex is in this area here. Um so the you know the original crystals that Marcel was cutting for the two dozen medical doctors. Um, they weren't inclusion free by any means. Um, they were effective and the doctors had amazing experiences with the techniques Marcel uh, trained him with, trained them with. Um, so yeah, and you know, the uh, the other crystals, you know, in recognition that um, you know, there's many different types of Ogle crystals. You know, he started with a four, six, eight, twelve, and so forth. Um, I'd like to read something that uh, Marcel said about the about the number of sides, because that's a big that's question. That yes, everybody says, "Well, how many sides should I get?" You know, and um, and what's the difference between them? Um, and this is what. Marcel said he maintained that the um, four, six, eight, and 12 sided healing crystals were the complete set of healing instruments. He focused primarily on the four, six, and eight. Anything beyond this was of little value for this form of service, he said. I, I uh, Ramida, who's worked closely with him, uh, who unfortunately recently just passed away. Um, he said, I once showed him a 24-sided crystal, and he said, it was very nice work, but it was primarily an ego crystal. <laughs> By this, he meant that it satisfied one's need for more and bigger, you know. An exception would be for the purpose of channeling or subjective communication. Still, individuals gravitate to whatever their intuition guides them for their particular needs, as we were just saying. When a crystal becomes too highly faceted in a Vogel pattern, the energetic spin is reduced, and the, re the result is often less rather than more. 
some crystals are so multifaceted that they are virtually cylinders. I know some people have 144, <laughs> even one, one person has 377 sides, you know, thinking, oh, this is going to be the super powerful crystal, you know, but unfortunately, still the geometrical patterning of the crystal has an effect, but the information described here regarding Marcel Vogel's research and the treatment protocol does not necessarily apply to crystals over 14 sides, he was saying. Now, Jenhan was much more generous <laughs> with, with that. And I asked him about, uh, I said, uh, I said, I said to him, does uh, increasing the number of facets of a multifaceted vocal crystal yield any greater amplification as Dr. Marcel Vogel uh, assumed. Uh, Jen Han said, uh, uh, should I read this or would you like yes, to do this? Yes, um, well, you can read it. You can read it if you want. Okay, um, Jen Han said, no. <laughs> <laughs> he said it will magnify the healing power by radiance. The crystals that are multifaceted to an extreme are transmitting life energy by radiance, but they are not the most effective when opening the eye of the crystal, as we were talking about earlier, because the dynamics is lost. You need to respect the structure of the lattice and always cut in perfect ratio with the hexagonal core structure. This is really key, you know what he's saying. Um, the efficient shape of these crystals do not only concern the correct degree of the two pyramidal extremities but as well the lateral ratio the facets everything must be in harmony with the core lattice vertically and laterally every crystal works for healing whatever the shape because quartz does what quartz does it realigns the atoms in an ordered state of matter it transcends it when you use a quartz that is cut Following its lattice, it becomes a precise, powerful surgical tool. As I said previously, the six-sided ones are the most efficient for most of the work. A greater number of sides works for healing only because it is not about the shape anymore, but about the very nature of the quartz. That is why I previously told you that vocal cut crystals were more effective at six sides for everything. But the greater number of sides only works for healing and clairvoyance as well. Not because of its shape anymore, but because the properties of quartz. It will always be better than a raw quartz, but when there are so many sides, it becomes a faceted cylinder. There is no point. It is not worth investing more currency, you know, that's money, <laughs> into a great, I was asking him about this, you know, because, you know, people spend a lot of money on multifaceted crystals thinking, oh, it's going to be more powerful, you know, but uh, it's not so. In a, a greatly faceted crystal, a 4, 6, 8, and 12 matter, the more efficient is six-sided. You will always have a more powerful effect when the crystal is cut following the C axis, but it's best using the numbers I gave you. Too much facets lose the focus of the beam. The lattice of the crystal is too much interfered in its dynamics. As I was saying, they are healer crystals, but compared to near cylindrical shape dynamics, the more it tends toward it, it loses its power. Four, six, eight, 12, even 24, you know, we went, far greater than Marcel the works. So th those people have a 24 size, it, it still works for you. So don't worry. Afterwards, the vortex effect de decreases. So, you know, to summate um, what uh, Marcel and Jenhan both collabor corroborated pretty closely on, on this whole uh, idea of the effect of the number of sides on the crystal. Um, because they both said that for a healing crystal, a four, six, eight, and 12 sided works. Marcel believed that the vortex energetic spin reduced after 14 sides. But uh, Jenhan stated, um, and he knows quite a bit, being a, a, you know, a star maker, terraformed planets, um, that the vortex spin reduces above 24 sides. 
for both the healing crystal and for opening the eye of the crystal, Jen Han said that the six sided is that's cut in respect to the hexagonal core structure of the crystal is the most efficient for doing everything. So that answers the question, you know, people, many people ask that question, you know, it's like, how many sides? Know that, you know, if you have a multi-sided uh, Vogel under 24 sides, that it works as a healing crystal and it uses the radiance because of the quartz that the six sided has extra attributes that we've recently learned about. Yes, and uh, well, I uh, we were always impressed by the the corroboration. You know, the M Marcel and, and Jenhan. I mean, they, they pretty much all the time come to the same conclusions. And Jenhan has been, uh, of course, he, he is more in touch with all this, this this technology, and he went a little step further. And we, with all our work with him, well, my work was only to pass on the messages. <laughs> But um, you you work behind with the, the crystal cutters, with all the knowledge that Marcel shared and scientists. And from this collaboration, wonderful collaboration, something was born. Uh, the Vogel Eridian crystal. So can you tell us more about it? the uh we, we we call it the uh in honor of marcel who originally came up with the concept and in honor of jenhan redion we call it a vogel redion because this is one thing that uh, marcel was not aware of about cutting it not only vertically but laterally in respect to the hexagonal core of the crystal that uh allows this incredible uh, ability of the crystal in order to connect to all points in time and space, multiple dimensions. In fact, uh, uh, one, one of the methods of opening up this eye of the crystal is not only, uh, we'll, we'll get into this in a future class, but... Um, but you and I both have these crystals that we have signal generators, which are using silver electrodes that are pulsing the crystals. And we ha you had an amazing thing happen, <laughs> you know, with John Charles when you uh, accidentally or you know it just happened to leave your uh, your your crystal activated and your vortex was open. And uh, um, yeah, you might want to. Uh, Sure, that, that I think it's a, an incredible. Okay, it was very funny. Uh, you know, we 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 finally understood why it was happening my side and it hadn't happened your side, because so my my settings that's a replica of my settings. It's with another crystal, but I have candle holders and I have a bigger one in which I set up the the six sided uh, Vogel, which we, which I I'm working. Done. Mm -hmm. That's only for decoration or you know something else, just to keep it safe. Um, so, it in fact it was a metallic structure that did a Faraday cage, and uh, that just wow. the, the the energy of the crystal just bounced in it and just concentrated it. That that's that's what we 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 understood because um, it's when we ask a question: Is Elena's setting? Uh, the right settings. Jen Han had never seen my settings. So through Thorhan, we shared my vision of my installation of my crystal. And Jen Han saw it for the first time. He said, oh, that's the metal structure around it. It interferes with um, the, the piezoelectric effect. It, it just concentrates it. That's why it opened a vortex. So uh, it's 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 not safe to play with these things without really knowing what you're doing. But what happened mm, twice, true. twice, yeah, it's very important. Do not play with that without knowing what you're doing. And we'll come to that in our classes. But yeah, the, the when we were stimulating, the, we were doing that uh, together done via Zoom, one of us with our crystals. And 
stimulating the eye of the crystal by electrical pulses and uh, silver coins at the height of the vortex eye. And on my side, something happened. I felt the, the air, the energy change in the room, and I heard voices. Mm -hmm. And the voices were in a language I couldn't uh, understand. So maybe it's inner earth people, maybe it's a parallel dimension, I don't know. And uh, when when we cut, I cut the pulse, it, it just closed. And that was strange. And then I tried it again a month later. I was just putting it on and I said to myself, oh, it will energize the room and see what happened. So I left it. I went to the <laughs> kitchen. I heard Japanese music coming from the living room where the crystal was. And the cats heard it at the same time as me. And they went, what? That? They ran to it and it suddenly fell something. And it was coming from the crystal like a transistor. <laughs> And I, 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 I don't know what happened. It was my uh, my emotion, my consciousness. It just stopped when I, I was so emotional. So what's going on? And it just stopped. And at the same time, I knew later that Jean Charles, with whom I'm connected, because we've been in, in teleportations together and working together, and we're good friends. He was at that that same time because Jean Charles as well has a he has abilities with his mind without any technology to teleport or transpose his consciousness, and he was working on 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 his movie or video and he was listening to Japanese music, and he thought he thought, oh Elena would love this music, so he thought about me at the time, and it was the same music we could compare. The, I could find on YouTube a music that was kind of similar and he said yes that's very similar to what I was listening to so you can these I mean people crystals so powerful and you really need to know what you're doing with it so that's why we are taking it step by step what were your impressions Dan when I told you this story with Jean Charles and the Japanese music Oh, yeah, it, it, it's, uh, I thought, wow, you know, in fact, I asked Jenny, is this, is this a way to use for telepathy? We know that um, he had to get special permission. It's the only second time he had to get special permission from authorization from the higher command. Um, we know that uh, John Charles' gamma brainwave production is off the charts. <laughs> yes. Yes. And uh, Jen Han has stressed the importance that when we do this work with crystals, it's important to be in gamma brainwave. Uh, it's the most effective. And uh, yeah, I asked John Charles to send me the MP3 and I shared it with you. And you're in a remote, you know, rural area of Ireland. And it's like, you don't have like, you know, um, Japanese music. You know, playing no, oh, you. you know, the, 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 uh, the first thing before running to the living room, I just looked by the window there was no cars or people, you know, with transistors outside. But as soon as I saw there was no one, I, oh, it's coming from the living room. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, you know, the, the, the amazing abilities and capabilities that can happen with a crystal when you open the vortex within it, uh, we're, we're just discovering more. And that's just one example Um and uh, yeah, like Elena said, you know, this is not something to to play around with, you know, because uh, if you activate a crystal like that and you go with a large crystal, it's more uh, more of a concern than a smaller crystal. But the crystal starts to sing; <laughs> uh, it will uh, transcend light and implode, <laughs> and <laughs> it could it could be. Uh, but you know, for the most part, it's. It, it's it's quite harmless and um uh you know when you're using a when we were asking Jen Han about you know activating the eye he was saying about you know pressing and then he said uh you know we can't we can't press 20 times a second you know our fingers and so there's this uh electronic method that you can uh you can use 
but that's in another class in that's the future. <laughs> so I think we've we've been uh, around all the the points we wanted to 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 talk about about picking the right crystal to recapitulate and the the whole um, advice we give to uh, to the audience about how to pick the right crystal. Um, what would you recommend the, the bullet points? It all depends on uh, you know what what your budget is <laughs> and what um, what you plan to do or is this something that's just a passing thing or is it something you want to invest something into to, to really get into the science of of this technology? Um, you know, it's an individual basis on that. Um, the, uh, what was I going to say, um, you know, I, I wanted to mention that the, uh, the, the 60 degree angle, I find it interesting, you know, the Egyptian obelisks, <laughs> the points are 60 degrees. The, um, if you take a tetrahedron, uh, which Jenhan said is the, this tetrahedral fractal geometry is the secret of the universe. The sending end of the crystal, the 60 degrees, uh, all the angles within a tetrahedron are just happen to be 60 degrees. So it's, it's a matter of form resonance, so that you're resonating with the matrix itself. And uh, we'll, we'll go more into, you know, the 52 degree angle and the 60 degree in a, in a future class. But... Um, um, uh, you know, I, I recommend our, our, uh, our friends at Crystal Light and Sound, uh, they offer, uh, crystals that have been, uh, instructed by their cutters to, uh, you know, cut the hexagonal in relationship to the hexagonal core of the crystal. Um, and, and there's some good deals across the internet, eh? but, you know, it's always a gamble whether or not you'll get something, uh of the correct and you use your intuition um again we're not crystal sales people but we uh <laughs> but we want to educate and empower the people of uh our beloved planet here to, to um you know bring this technology into awareness and into a uh, into a way that uh you know can benefit life on this planet and it is time we know about these technologies that we have been made forgetful about. You know, these technologies before were used on Earth. And now it is time. Um, they're back. <laughs> so uh, we are taking you by the hand and we are looking forward to see you the next class with mm -hmm. your favorite crystal. <laughs> We're going to do some magic. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, we did that uh, one uh, video where we had, uh, I think it was like 1,700 people live, and we actually spiked the Schumann resonance. Some people had a glass of water. Some people had a little crystal in their hand. Very few had a Vogel radion type of crystal. Uh, we know that uh, the square root of 1% to less than 9,000 people can affect the entire planetary matrix of all 8 billion people on this planet. And so just imagine, you know, in the future, if we had a um, an army of <laughs> crystal users that uh, were all envisioning this beautiful positive timeline and they imprinted it into the matrix, uh, I think it might have quite an effect. Yes, and uh, you know, anything you learn, you pass it on. We all are uh, the, the medium through which the knowledge is passed on. So whatever you learn here, just pass it on. Talk, talk about it. Uh, teach others. Share this video. And uh, this will contribute to change this world. Into we have some very exciting classes ahead, which uh, I'm going to be asking Jen Han to expand upon the healing procedures Marcel was able to develop and were effective and so uh and much more so uh stay tuned 